I hated Shazam. That movie was a total incoherent mess in my opinion. Black Adam? Better. But let's talk about just how much. What's going on YouTube? My name is Jay Lee and I like a lot of stuff. Today I'm talking about the sequel to 2019 certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes at 90% positive Shazam Black Adam. Unfortunately, this movie didn't fare so well with critics. But The Rock and his loyal fan base have this at an 89% audience score. I gotta say, I found this one infinitely more watchable than Shazam. Did I love it? Definitely not. Everything people are saying about it feeling dated and being a movie that doesn't push the envelope for superhero films, it's all true. It's as generic as they come. But if comparing the formulaic superhero fare in Black Adam to the nonsensical bullshit in Shazam, I'll take the former any day. Listen, I've annoyed my friends and family for years about Shazam being idiotic, so I refuse to do it here too. Instead, I'm just going to refer you to Ryan George's pitch meeting because his Shazam video perfectly encapsulates my feelings for that abomination of a movie. I'll put a link for that specific video down below. Okay, back to Black Adam. The movie opens up with a voiceover that's eye-rollingly bad. And as the origin of Black Adam unfolds, you're treated to some pretty crappy green screen and a washed out color palette that would make Sin City proud. This is followed up by a 5,000 year time jump to modern times, and nothing screams out current day like a rehashed Smashing Pumpkins song from 1995. Ugh, this movie really did feel like Daredevil era of superhero schlock. But thankfully, there's some fun, mindless action sequences to distract you from the bland, trite filmmaking on display. The Rock has Teth Adam free Freaking mercs people. A lot of people. I heard rumors that there was a version of this film that could have been R-rated with more overt gratuitous violence, but in all honesty, it didn't need it. The deaths are cartoony, but still violent enough for you to appreciate the careless disregard this godlike being has for human life. It was actually a lot of fun to watch him destroy things and people, but it does wear thin after he does this. <laughs> over and over throughout the movie. As I said, mindless action sequences to distract from the bland filmmaking. What kind of worked for me was some, I repeat, some of the humor. There's some quirky fish out of water moments involving a young superhero worshiping kid. No, not that one. So I definitely chuckled at The Rock's deadpan delivery during those moments. However, if it wasn't for those breaks and his emotionless stoicism, it'd be very easy to call this performance boring. And, it is, mostly. Pierce Brosnan turns in a fine performance as Doctor Fate, the character who likely inspired Marvel's Doctor Strange, since the character does predate the Sorcerer Supreme by over 20 years. And my saying it was a fine performance isn't praise per se, because Brosnan could have played this role in his sleep. I'm really just saying he wasn't great, but didn't suck either. He was, you know, just fine. Dr. Fate is by far the most interesting character in this movie, and most interesting in this bunch of cobbled together enhanced individuals though. So even though I didn't find Brosnan's performance inspiring, Dr. Fate was pretty awesome. The performance by the rest of the JSA was, well, kind of what you expect by a Dwayne Johnson led superhero movie. Hawkman felt like they were grasping at straws to get someone formidable and ended up with this guy to lead the team. There's a newbie Ant-Man type character called Adam Smasher and a charming female character called Cyclone who fill out the rest of the squad, but really don't seem like much in terms of opposition for Adam, nor are they very much fun to watch as an ensemble. There's plenty of testosterone infused exchanges between muscle heads, cut by playful but typical young people banter. It's all kind of underwhelming. Amidst the few moments I genuinely enjoyed and laughed at during this movie, plenty of cringy dialogue and forced comedy has Black Adam towing the line to being 2000s era bad superhero crap. When you factor in the boring ass villain and the blah storytelling, it really isn't going to be a movie I remember very much. There is a post credit scene that creates a through line to the rest of the DCEU, but now with James Gunn around to hopefully shake things up a bit, time will tell if that scene will even amount to anything. I may have enjoyed this more, you know what, I can't even say that earnestly, I may have tolerated this more than Shazam, but it's still only getting a 4.5 out of 10 from me. So what did you think? Better or worse than Shazam? Did The Rock do the character justice? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and feel free to come back for my thoughts on all the stuff I haven't talked about yet. 